Right. I know I, I started to think a little bit of a stir last week. Amen. Because I talked about some things that were that were uh, needed to be talked about and so forth, so on. So uh, uh, we're going to continue this morning. You, you got it going. All right. Let's pray as we get into the word. Heavenly Father, thank you so much, Father God, as we get into your word tonight. I mean, this morning, I pray for utterance, Father, that you help me to speak what you want me to speak. Nothing more and nothing less. But Lord, also give us ears to hear what your heart is saying here and what the spirit is saying through your word. Help us to learn some things that will be a blessing not only to our marriages but to our families and to everyone around us and to this church. Oh, Father God, help me to speak as the oracles of you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We've been going verse by verse through the book of 1 Corinthians, and, uh, uh, which was a city called Corinth where Paul preached the gospel. And I call the theme of this teaching... Um, in 1 Corinthians, I call God's grace at work. If there's a theme, because you know, we talk, I talk so much about the love and the grace of God, but how does this love and grace work in a church that's having some major issues? There was major stuff that was happening. And if you missed last week, please go to our graceofaz.com and, and you can watch the, the sermon from last week. Um, uh, we said some, some things that I think you needed to hear. If you heard my heart, if you're not hearing me correctly, you're going to miss what I was saying. Amen. You're going to miss what I said. Some things that were very, very, uh, uh, I opened up my heart and shared some things that, that, that you needed to know and so forth. But, but the thing is, listen to it. And, but I, I can't, I, I only have so much time. So I'm going to jump into this next section. Because remember, Corinthians, God, Paul was dealing with the church that's going through major issues. This is like a, a Las Vegas of that time, but worse. And so the worldliness in the world is affecting the church. And so questions are asked of Paul, what about this? What, what, and, 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 and then Paul had to deal with, the, last week we talked a little bit about it, about a guy in the church that was having uh, uh, sexual relations with his stepmom. Amen. And, 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 and the issue, but the main issue of Paul, what he was talking about in chapter 5 and 6, was that he says, you guys are puffed up in pride. Why? Because you were treating it lightly like if it didn't matter. Amen? Like, like it, we live in a society today that it doesesn't bother anymore. You know, it, it, it's so, when we talked about what, what it means in, in sexual morality is the word pornea, where you get the word uh, 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 fornication and, 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 and includes all, you know, from pornography to, to sexual relations, uh, of those with the same sex, and so forth. And again, when you start talking about these, you're coming against them. If you hear, hear my message last week, you'll see I'm not coming against you. I'm not condemning you. We love you. But, but, but we can't still say that what you're doing is right. You can still love the sinner. Amen. I mean, you can still love even a believer who's doing this kind of stuff. You can still love them, but not accept what they're doing. Amen. Why does God hate sin? Because sin destroys you. It messes your life. And like I said, I said this last week, and I'm going to say it again. One of the other reasons that, 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 that uh, why is God against men with men and women with women and, and what you see today, uh, living, you know, uh, cohabiting and so forth, why is God all against that? Because when God made Adam, and, notice it was Adam and Eve, it was man and woman, and, they be, and, 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 and marriage, it's the uniting of two people becoming one. And why? Because that's the picture of Jesus being the husband and the church being his wife. Amen? In fact, we're going to get into it today a little bit because we're going to get into marriage principles. And so, and so it messes up the type of what God had set up, that the relationship between us and, and Jesus is almost like that of a husband with his wife. Amen? Amen? And so here's the truth right there. If you're married to Jesus, do you think Jesus would divorce you? No. If you're truly married to him. No. Do you think he would divorce you? No. See? So that'll set you free right there. That'll give you a security in him. If you understand, you know, that he, he's, a, he's a, you know what I'm saying? If Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Again, but these are things you've got to understand. If you don't understand these things, you're going to get into trouble. Amen? But let's go. But here we are. Here we are, though. I, I got to go on because I only got so much time. It's already 11. I got to go. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's go there. Let's move on. And I'm only going to do one chapter here. That's all we have time for. But principles of marriage. I, I, and I title this uh, marriage principles. Or, but this section that, 
uh, verses 1 through 9, I call the importance of sex in marriage. Amen. Verse 1. Some of you are like, I'm glad I showed up today. <laughs> Verse 1. Now concerning the things of which you wrote to me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. What does he mean, it is good for a man to touch a woman? It, it's, he's talking about sexual relations. If you look it up in different translations and, and so forth, it's talking about, in fact, NLT puts it this way. It is good to abstain from sexual relations. Can you put the NLT in verse 1? It is good to abstain from sexual relations. I think it, it says in there. Got it? Oh, things are taking a whole while. Anyway, I got to move on. I can't wait for it. So, it, there it is. It, it is good to abstain from sexual relations. Amen? You might say, why? The next verse tells you why. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each what? Woman have her own husband. Amen. So, so he's given us the answer because of sexual immorality in the world and all the stuff that's happened in the world, the perversion that you're seeing. Now listen, I shared some personal stuff last week that was real personal, but I want, let, me, let me share something that I want to explain to you. I, I want to make it very, very, very clear. I told you that this person was, was getting, was getting was, in other words, was, was, I, I was going after pornographic material. Why? Because of my natural desire for the, for the opposite sex. So my desire was for a woman. L hear me out. My desire was for a woman. I had, I'm a man. If you're a blood and man, you're going to desire women. And any man that doesn't desire women, something's wrong with you. <laughs> if you're a full-blooded man in the flesh, you have a desire for the opposite sex. Okay? Now listen, but don't, I don't want you to misunderstand what I said last week. I, you see what I'm saying? I wasn't living as a homosexual. Please understand what I said. What I was trying to get to you is this. My desire was for to, you know, I was lusting after women through pornography. But what the devil tried with this person is for me to what? He was, get, in other words, he was wanting to have sexual relations with me to get the pornographic magazine. I wanted, see, I wanted the pornography and so he was, well, I'll give it to you if you do this. So do you see how the enemy was using that to deceive me? But in me, I know it. I was like, no, that's yuck. I don't want to. But see what I'm saying? It was being used to deceive me to live. And the enemy could have deceived me. If I had gone, kept going, it could have. This is before I was saved, okay? This is before I knew Jesus. So if I kept going that way, I could have started having thoughts of being a homosexual. I would have been deceived. When naturally my desire was for a woman. Right. Amen. I was looking for July and August and September. <laughs> and that's the thing though. If I had progressed that way, then I would have started desiring men. And guess where it leads? It gets worse. That's why you see they're desiring kids. In other words, it's just like any other sin. It starts with a little toke. And then you want some coke. It starts with a little, oh, just a little drink. It's not going to hurt. And then it leads to boom, boom, boom. Bam, you're on the floor. Amen. No, 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 I don't smoke it no more. Tired of looking up on the floor. Remember that? No, thank you, please. It only makes me sneeze. Then it's hard. That was a Ringo Starr. He sang that song. Remember that? No, no, no more. I don't talk it no more. Amen. See what I'm saying? Sin is, see, you, lust and all this stuff is never satisfied. And so when you see, and, and so the answer, he's given the answer, it's good that you don't touch a woman. In other words, if you're not married to somebody, it's good that you don't touch them. Therefore, he says, because of sexual immorality, because of the craziness in the world, every man should have a woman, and uh, uh, every husband should have a wife, and every wife should have a husband. There's the answer. Amen. Every husband should have what? A wife. His own wife. And every wife should have what? Their own husband. That's the answer. Amen. But notice, it's been perverted in our society. Our society, it's free. You can, there's people that are marrying their dogs. Estás loco. Pero que si. 
I mean, it's crazy. People, and listen, today good is being called what? Evil. And evil is being called good. Again, guys, and, and, and Pastor, you're preaching like, what happened to grace? I'm preaching grace, brother. Grace will empower you, deliver you from that stuff. That's what set me free when I got born again. Let me tell you, I forgave that person. That's the first, one of the first things I did. I forgave that person. And I said, no, no more, no more. I'm a new man now. That's what grace does. It'll change your life. It'll save you. It'll make you new. But if I hadn't understood the grace of God, I, I could have been convicted and whatever because even though I got saved, I did struggle for a while still with pornography. It wasn't every day, but it was, you know, I would go doing real well for six months and then I, and when I was feeling depressed and lonely. Why? Because I desired the opposite sex. Amen? Amen? I know I'm sharing some stuff that you wouldn't hear. This shouldn't be shared from the pulpit, but guess what? The kids are hearing it anyway out there, but the wrong thing. They're hearing the wrong perverted stuff. So it might as well be preached here and preached correctly. We're staying till 12 o'clock today. I don't care if the Cardinals are playing. Right now they're 4 and 0. Oh. I'm 0 oh and 4. Listen, I'm just going to mention this because of the time. The topic of sex is very important. But sex was God's idea. Yes. Sex, like fire, is good when it functions in the boundaries that God set up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Sex out of marriage will burn just like fire out of a campsite can burn a forest. So... What is the purpose of sex? Real quick, three things. I don't have time to get into it. Those of you that come to the group, I'll give you the scriptures and all that. I don't have time today. But here's three purposes of sex. Number one, for having children. Amen? If Eve wasn't desirable, Adam wouldn't be chasing after her. Come on now. Right? Yeah. God naturally, listen, men are affected by what they see. That's why women, you wield much power. One of, the ministers, one of the ministers at the conference, he said, my wife, was, my wife tried tempting me. He's, and he says, I resisted for 10 seconds. <laughs> this is amazing. Why? Because you're affected, men are affected by what they see. That's why when they sell cars or whatever, they have what? A woman. Hello? The, the enemy's not stupid. Amen? And even today, there's women that are caught up in pornography and all that other stuff and whatever. And, you know, they, you know, they go to Chippendales or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, they're affected by what they see too. Amen? Amen? That's why my, my wife and I, we were walking down the mountain when we were, I said, honey, uh, or where was it? Oh, no, at the, at the, at the train, at the airport. And, you know, the, air, the train thing, sky train moves or whatever. Honey, grab me. Grab my arm, I told her. We, we, I can hold to the pipe. No, grab these right here. <laughs> grab the guns. Because she's like, I can hold to the pipe. No, this right here. This will keep you safe. Okay. Amen? So she finally submitted <laughs> to the gun. Listen, this verse says, that, so, so for having children, the next one is for meeting physical and emotional needs. Listen, sexual relations within a marriage is to meet physical and emotional needs. Amen. And we're going to get into it in just a little bit. And then the last one, you, some of you might be surprised, is for pleasure. The, la the third one is for pleasure. Is, is sexual relations with a marriage for pleasure? You better believe it. In fact, if you have time, study Proverbs. Those of you single, don't study. But those of you who are married, <laughs> study Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15 through 20, where he's talking about her thighs, her breasts, and all that stuff. He's talking to his wife and he's talking about how good she looks. So don't tell me, don't tell me. Some people, the Bible is such a boring book. The Bible, listen, God is the one that made you. And he did a beautiful thing. Amen? God made you women beautiful. But for a reason, to glorify him. Amen? And you can have a beautiful relationship sexually with your husband. It was designed 
between a man and a woman. Why? Think about it. What if? Okay, let's say, let's, let's reason with the world. What if? Okay, okay. So that's all, you know, uh, uh, you know, men with men and women with women. What would happen? In a generation, we wouldn't have any more people because nobody would be having babies. Why? Because the men are after the men and the women are after the women. Yeah, but you could, you could sub and... No, 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 no. If you're going to go this way, go all the way. No, oh, I'm half and half. I like half. If you're going to do it, do it all the way and quit playing those games. So you're either gay or you're not. And the truth is, the Bible says you used to be, but you're not anymore. Paul says, some of you were homosexuals, some of you were lesbians. You were, but you've been washed, but you've been sanctified, and you've been set apart by Jesus. So that's the good news. Jesus washes you and cleans you. Amen? Amen? Jesus washes you and cleans you. Listen, and notice though, look at, look at verse 2. So the verse, verse 2 says that one of the reasons to get married is so that we would avoid sexual immorality. Pastor, are you saying that marrying for sex is a good reason to get married? Yes! <laughs> now listen, it's not the only reason. It's not the only reason. But it is a very good reason. Why? You know why? Because it helps keep, keep you out of temptation. I'm, I know I'm saying some bold things. But it's the word. Look at verse 3. Let the husband... Render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise also the wife to her husband. This is not uh, affection and just being nice. It's talking about sexual relations. In fact, throw this, um, throw this in the NLT, uh, or yeah, NLT for me, and God's Word translation. The husband should fulfill his wife's sexual needs, and the wife should fulfill her husband's sexual needs. That's pretty plain. This is the Bible, people. I'm just reading the Bible. Sex was God's idea. It's beautiful. It's awesome in the context of marriage. Outside of a marriage between a husband and a wife, it is dangerous and it'll burn. Amen. In fact, God's word translation says, husbands and wives should satisfy each other's sexual needs. So it's so important that husbands and wives satisfy each other's sexual needs. And yet I have been so shocked that, that sometimes in counseling, I've seen where, where some couples are, are abstaining from sexual relations. No, it's not good. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. Why did you get married then? For the money. He's a, go he got a lot of money, Pastor. <laughs> Why did you get married? Listen, it, if you have no desire for sexual relations, stay single. I'm going to show you from the Word, this is what Paul says. If you have no desire for sexual relationship, please don't get married and leave that other person burning. That's not fair and that's not right. If you have no desire for sexual relations, do not get married. Now some are called with the gift of singleness. And that's fine. You're not, you're not any less or better than anybody else. Just because you, know, you have a desire. See what I'm saying? Please hear my heart. I know I'm being bold. But we're living in last days. And it's time for the peanut butter and all the little marshmallowy stuff to stop. So why? Because we're getting, Jesus is coming soon. And we got to get ready. Amen. Amen. This is, I, I, I'm just sharing the Bible with you. Amen. He says, because notice what he says in the next verse. Verse 4. The wife does not have authority over her own body. <gasps> ay, ay, ay. But the husband does. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body. But the wife does. See, when you get married, you're not your own property anymore. That's right, right. So that's what I'm saying. If you, don't like, if you don't want to have sexual relations, do not get married. Right. Amen. Stay single. Amen. Because otherwise, you're really going to be hurting that other person who desires you. And, you're not, and because you don't desire it, you're not meeting his or her needs. And there's going to be struggle. And that's why there's a lot of fights and struggles in marriages in this area. Because husband and wife are not taking care of each other. That's all he wants, sex. Puro sex, sex, sex. The wife says. But you don't understand, wife. There's an emotional attachment uh, that's involved here. There's an, a, 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 com, a, a coming together that, that, that that's where... It, 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 sex is more than just skin on skin. There's a spiritual part to it. 
and an emotional connection there. And if those things aren't being met, no wonder. Listen, a, a, a couple that has a great sexual relationship will out, outlast any other struggles that's happening. In other words, when things are really bad other places, if there's a good sexual relationship, that'll keep you going when the road is rough. Amen. Man, I know I'm sharing stuff to some people like, Pastor, is this all about sex? No, it's not all about sex. I'll tell you, men, it starts in the kitchen. It starts how you treat your wife. Because us men are affected. See, with women, it's so easy. All they have to do is just the way they dress and, and, and get a guy ready. But with, with, but with women, guys, listen to me. It's the way you treat her. That's right. It's the way. If you don't treat her good, amen? Amen? That's why, you, that's why you see some of these big guys with, how could he have such, such skinny, beautiful woman? It's a big guy like that. It's because he, he treats her good. Right. Yeah, Pastor, but I'm more buff than whatever. It don't matter. If you don't treat her good, it doesn't matter how you look. I tried doing that with her. I said, I'm going to start getting a six-pack, building myself up. I tried doing all that, and just, it, didn't, it didn't affect her. So I was like, well, what am I doing that for? <laughs> she, she's like, that doesn't, it doesn't, it, it didn't, in other words, it didn't move her. Hello. And so I was like, forget it. Then why am I killing myself trying to get guns and everything? What she wants is the way I treat her, spending quality time with her. Find out what her love language, her love language is, is quality time. Right. Spending time with her. Yep. Right? What's your other ones? Acts of service. Oh, hijuela, that's the, that's the one that's hard. That's the one that's hard. Acts of service. That means she wants me to serve her. I look good when I serve her. But when I don't forget it, you ain't getting nothing. You get, stay away from me. You don't look sexy. You... Now with a, you know, now if I'm working or cleaning or doing the honeydews at home, that's when, you know what I'm saying? Isn't that true? How do I get there? Let's get out of here before I get in trouble. Amen? Listen, so listen, uh, again, in fact, put, put this in the message, verse 3 and 4, for me. Okay. The, oh, back up, back up one. Can you back okay. Listen. He's talking about sexual immorality. Not sex only within a certain context. It's good for a man to have a wife and for a woman to have a husband. Sexual drives are strong, but marriage is strong enough to contain them and provide for a balanced and fulfilling sexual life in a world of sexual disorder. The marriage bed must be a place of mutuality. The husband seeking to satisfy his wife. Come on now. And the wife seeking to satisfy her husband. Marriage is not a place to stand up for your rights. Next verse. Marriage is a decision to serve the other, whether in bed or out. Ow. Woo. Wow. Glad I came today. Verse 5. Let's move on. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come to, uh, together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of what? So what is he saying? There's some people that have, uh, uh, that they can't control themselves in this area. Then work on yourself. Get ready and find yourself a woman and find yourself a husband. If you have difficulties in this area, work on you. Get yourself ready. God has somebody out there for you. Yeah. Amen? Again, it's not just for the sexual area, but get yourself ready. Yeah. So you'll be that good husband or good wife to that, the one God has for you. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Can we move on? Yes, move on. First. Amen? But notice he says, don't deprive one another. So that's telling me, don't deprive. There's some families, there's some marriages, couples that use sex as a weapon. Don't use sex as a weapon. Don't deprive one another. He says, except for consent for a time. Why? If you do, you might get tempted. In fact, uh, the message says, Satan has an ingenious way of tempting you. That's where a fair start. Why? M needs aren't being met at home. Amen? And at the office, oh, oh. 
You look so good today. Come on now. And that husband is craving for that attention from his wife. But the wife is like, ah, get away from me. But the office girl is like, oh, you look so good. And so the husband's craving that attention. And so what is he going to do? So like, yeah, really? You think I look good? And he's saying, I wish my wife would tell me that. Mm. That's how it starts. Likewise, the other way. Husband, you're not telling her she's beautiful, that you love her, and whatever. And some guy in the office is like, man, that looks, you look good today. That's a nice outfit you have on. Come on, people. I know I'm being so flat out bold. I hope you love me because I love you and I'm telling you the truth. See what I'm saying? It happens both ways. Amen? It happens both ways. So, so if you don't take care of business at home, somebody else is going to take care. If you don't chase your spouse at home, somebody else is going to chase your spouse. Amen. Amen. But young people, listen to me. Sex is God's idea. And in marriage, it's one of the most beautiful things if you understand it. But that's out in marriage. It'll leave you empty and sick and whatever. Why? Why? Because there's no commitment there. Amen. There's no, there's no, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? There's not a commitment there. Amen? That's why sometimes when couples have come to me and they're having issues in that area, it's like they can't, they're starting to trip up in that area. I tell them, get married. But pastor, you shouldn't tell them. Listen, they're, they're, they're self-condemning themselves. If you really are meant for each other, pray about it. And if you're meant for each other, then get married. In fact, in the culture, in Jewish culture, they married very young. Because they already knew, that the kids were already active. And so they were married very, very young. Amen. So that they would get, wouldn't get into sexual immorality. Having sex with others outside of marriage and all that stuff. Amen. Verse 6. Oh Lord, help me to go through this. But I say this as a concession, not as a commandment. What's Paul saying? Now, this, I'm not, this is not a commandment from the Lord. He's just saying, some people think spiritual warfare is just praying in tongues and whatever. This is, having good relations in a sexual marriage is as much spiritual warfare as any other type of warfare. Amen. Why? It keeps the devil out. Right. It keeps him from bringing temptation and all that out. Amen? Amen. Pastor, are you telling me having a relationship with my wife is spiritual warfare? Yes. <laughs> See? Sex is good. It's God's idea. Amen? It's God's idea. Let's move on. Before I get in worse trouble. Verse 7. But I wish, but look at this. Hear this. But I wish that all men were, what? Even as myself. But each one has his own gift from God. One in this manner and another in that. But I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. So Paul's saying, yeah, if you're, if you're a widow, you lost your loved one. He says, Paul says, it's probably good for you to remain that way. Or, But notice, look at verse 9 though. But if they cannot exercise self-control... Let them what? Marry. marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Hijuela. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. I was, I was married, right? I got married when, and, and, uh, with my first wife. After four years, you know, she divorced me and so forth. It was hard. Those years that, from 87 until I met Pastor Lucy, was 90, we got married in 92. It was hard for me. I had to be very careful and so forth. It was hard. Pastor, were you tempted? Yes, I was. Amen? Why? Because I had, had normal sexual relations, right? Through my marriage partner, whatever. And when that stopped, I was, I was, it was hard. Very tough. Amen? So I knew that I wasn't going to stay single all my life. I did, Lord, i got, I got to find me a woman. <laughs> I need a heifer. Everybody should have their own. A heifer and a, and a herfer. <laughs> so, I prayed. But you know what? When I went to Bible school, I went to Bible school and said, Lord, it doesn't matter. 
if my ex comes back or not, I'm going to go do your will. That's right. So when I went to Bible school, I really wasn't looking f per se for a wife, but yet I missed having a family. Right. I miss, you know, I miss having a family and whatever. And I remember Pastor David, he would invite me over. Pastor, this, I'm talking about David Vasquez Sr. He would invite me over because they were going the second year. I was first year. And he'd invite me over to his house because he knew I was single. I was by myself. I needed to do something. So I'd spend time with them and do worship songs. We'd have fun together, play games, eat, you know, eat breakfast with beans and eggs and Coke, <laughs> Pepsi. Weird meals, but anyway, it was good. But uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so I spent time with him. We spent time together. Why? He, was, he knew Manuel. You know, he, and, and, but I remember that last year when they would go with families and whatever, and, they, and he, Pastor David came back. Manuel, you want to go with us? And I was, you know, I was already feeling sad, like I was by myself. And, you want to go with us, man? No, it's okay. They didn't invite me. It's okay. You go ahead and go. And I remember praying, God, am I ever going to get married again? Because I sure miss having that companion. I knew I, could, I'm, I didn't have the gift of singleness. I need, I need me a woman. I said, I need me a woman. And so, little did I know that God was already planning the next year, Sister Lucy, Pastor Lucy here, was going to be coming to Rhema the following year. God had already... Pre was even though you know what I'm saying I didn't know what was going on I was just going to do God's will but God already had it set up and we met in the same place through Pastor David Vasquez his friends and they were friends with them and that were and her their friends were her friends right. and and God worked it out that we met in the same house I slept on the sofa she slept in one of their rooms and we met and the Lord spoke to her after I proposed to her the Lord spoke to her we met in September. And, when we, and so forth but then uh, we started dating and in February of, of the following year I proposed to her on, on February 14 will you marry me and she said yes thank God <laughs> amen and listen I'm not man thank God. Oh, Lord help me help me to get this stuff out listen even when we were dating it was hard okay. amen so that way, in, in Rhema, they wouldn't let you get married until after you finished school. But if I had to, I would have married her right there and then. Amen? If I had to. Why? Because I was burning up. <laughs> Come on. You can't just be around a beautiful that you love or whatever and not desire to, ha to have sexual relations with her. It was hard. So as soon as June came around and <laughs> graduated, I married her. <laughs> June 6, 1992. Amen? <laughs> Why? Because I love her. Amen. Not just physically. Right. Yes. Traction is part of it. Because I really did love her. Yes. And I believe God had brought us together. I found my partner. Yes. Amen. Not only in life, but in ministry. Amen? 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 Amen. So Paul's saying he's not commanding them to stay away from sexual relations, but only permission, right? And, but some are graced to be single, and some are graced to be married. Uh, uh, message says, God gives the gift of single life to some, and the gift of the married life to others. There are advantages to being single. But if you're living a sexually tortured life as a single, get married! I'm not just saying find somebody and get, you know, come on, let's go get married. You know what I'm saying. Prepare yourself. Get ready. Amen? You, come on, people. You know in your heart whether you can live single without... See, but there's some that are being tortured and living a tortured single life. You need to get plan and prepare yourself for marriage. I'm being honest with you. If you can't... A, a, amen? If you're watching TV and this big hunk of a man comes out and you're really being tempted like, <laughs> I need... A, you need to get ready. You need to prepare yourself for marriage. Amen? Now, if it doesn't bug you at all, you know, like, you know, Mr. Hulk shows up and it doesn't like, yeah, he's nothing. <laughs> you can hack it. Amen. But if, it, if, it, it's, if it's an area that you, you know yourself, whether that's a struggle or not. Right. Amen. 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 But it's better to get married than to burn with sexual desire. That's what he said. And then let's move on. Look at verse, verse uh, 9. But if they cannot, oh, I already read that. Verse 10. Now, to the married, okay, let's, now, oh, please don't shut me down now. I'm going to get into marriage, divorce, and remarriage. That's a big topic right there. But I'm going to cover it very brief, because I don't have time. 
Notice what it says in verse 10 and 11. Now to the married I command, yet not I but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. But to the rest, I not the Lord say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. And a woman who has a husband who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving uh, wife is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. But if the unbeliever departs, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. For God has called us to what? Peace. Peace. For how do you know, O wife, whether you will save your husband? Or how do you know, O husband, whether you will save his wi your wife? Now, this is a big topic here. Let me just say it as, as clear as I can. God designed between marriage between a husband and a wife, and it was designed to last till one or both pass away. Till marriage, to death to your part, right? This is God's will, and it's His best. But how many understand not everyone is walking perfectly in this? Listen, some people will use these verses in 10 and 11 that say once you divorce, you cannot remarry again. If that's true, we're in trouble. Because <coughs> half of the Christians have divorced already. Yep. We, we divorce as much as the world. If not more, sometimes. So we're in trouble if this scripture really means that after you get married once, you cannot remarry again. Some people legalistically will take this verse and that I have somebody that's actually called me and tell me it's none of their business but they have called me and tell me you're wrong. You remarried. You need to divorce your wife and go back to your first one. Well, isn't that all? Get out. I sure felt peace about marrying my Lucy. How come God didn't warn me back then when I started falling in love? No, son. Don't marry her. You can't do that. You have already been married. Why didn't the Spirit of God tell me that I was doing wrong in marrying her? Why didn't God's Spirit tell me? Because I wasn't. He's talking about departing for a period of time. Yes, his best is for them to come back together. But listen, my wife divorced me and I can't make her come back to me. The will is involved here and God respects and honors a person's will. So she left, man. Now, I, for a whole year, I was believing God for her to come back. I waited. So I was trying to restore and work. Because, you know, Christopher, Chris, my son Chris was only two years old. I didn't want a divorce. Amen? Amen. I still loved her. Amen? I still loved her. I didn't want the divorce. Amen? See what I'm saying? But he's talking about for a time. What, but, but, Pastor, how about that scripture that Jesus said, if somebody uh, marries another woman, he commits adultery with her. If he divorces his wife and marries another woman, he commits... How about that scripture, though? Because that sure sounds like if, 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 I, if, I, if I divorce her and I marry somebody else, I'm committing adultery. Well, let me tell you. Go to Mark chapter 10. Look at this. I want you to go, because of time, Mark chapter 10. Now, those of you, if you want more information, come to the Bible study. We're going to deal with it a little bit more. I just don't have time because I'm running out of time. Mark chapter 10. Look at verse 10 through 12. Mark chapter 10, verse 10 through 12. In the house, his disciples asked him again about the same matter. Look at what Jesus tells them. So he said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. Verse 12. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. Boy, that sounds like... Ay, 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 I'm in trouble. Let me put it in the message, though. Look at this. Notice the message. When they were back home, the disciples brought it up again. Jesus gave it to them straight. A man who divorces his wife so he can marry someone else commits. So what is he referring to then? He's talking about somebody that's married and yes, a second one on the side, right? And so what he does is what? Divorces his wife so he can marry the other one. That's what he's talking about. He's not talking about somebody who's been married and then they divorced and now they can't marry again. He's referring. Aren't you glad for the Bible? 
Bible always scriptures interprets itself. Listen, so he says, so if he, a man who divorces his wife so he can marry someone else commits adultery against her and a woman divorces her husband so she can what? Again, marry someone else. It's, it's the purpose. In other words, they're divorcing the wife to get another one. Yeah. Or divorcing the husband to, and have you seen that kind of stuff? Yeah. That's committing adultery. See the difference? And so those people that are accusing me that you're committing adultery because you married, you know, you divorced, you know, your first wife and you married again. No, you, dude, interpret scripture correctly. <laughs> and you know what's crazy, this person? This person called me before we started doing the funds for this building. And guess what? Another person is trying to contact me with the same stuff. I believe, you know, this time I didn't answer. So I'm like, wow, we're in God's will. The enemy is attacking because God's going to do this now. It's just confirmation. Why, why do the attacks come when we're going to step out in faith and trust God? Because we're in God's will. Woo, glory to God. Amen. So I hope that helps you. Some of you have been condemned because you, you got remarried again. Amen. What he's talking about, if he departs for a season, and, but listen, that doesn't mean God's going to violate God's will because that's why he says in the other verses, if, you have, if you're married, and, 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 the, and the husband, your husband is an unbeliever, and if he leaves, let him go. So that means that's divorce right there. A woman, if you're married, or, or wife, if you're married to, a, uh, I mean, vice versa. Amen. Husband, if you're married to a woman that's an unbeliever, and she decides to live with you, don't let her go. Don't divorce her. But if she leaves, oh, this is freeing for somebody in here. Because your husband left you. And it wasn't the right thing to do. Guess what? You're free. Amen. You're free. Even if that husband, he, but pastor, he was a Christian. Listen, well, he wasn't living or acting like a Christian when he divorced you. So you're free. You're free to go on. And if God has, God has somebody better for you. Come on now. I said God has somebody better for you. Amen. If they left you, they don't know what they were doing anyway. Come on now. If they left you, they didn't know what they were doing. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're saying amen, but it's okay. I'm going to start wrapping it here. Okay, so let's move on. So what's the bottom line, Pastor, in, here in verse 17 through 24? Live as you are called. Now, were you married when you came to Jesus? Stay married. Don't divorce her. Come on now. Paul even says, if you, back then there were slaves. If you're a slave, he says, guess what? Even though you're a slave, you're God's free man. Amen. And those of you that are married, I mean, I mean, those of you that are not slaves and you're free, you're God's slave. There's a freedom in being God's slave, and there's a freedom even though if you were a slave and being uh, the uh, being uh, the uh, free in Christ. Oh man, I wish I had time. I don't have time. I'm running out. You're gonna have to read this for yourself. Amen. So Paul is basically saying from verses 17 through 24 that today, in whatever condition you were in when you were saved, if you were married to an unbeliever when you were saved, don't divorce your spouse. If you were a Gentile when you were saved, don't now try to act like a Jew. Don't get circumcised if you weren't circumcised. When, you know what I'm saying? Even if you were a slave, don't be concerned about it. But if, you're, if you can be set free, take advantage of it. The main point is that no matter how you find yourself when you get saved, you are now God's freed man in Christ. Now finally, to end. I know I stirred up some worms today. But I'm giving you the Bible, people. Amen. And it'll set you free if you get a hold of it. Yes. Verse 17. No, no, no. Go on to uh, verse 25. Now concerning virgins, I have the commandment from the Lord. I give you judgment as one whom the Lord in His mercy has made trustworthy. I suppose, therefore, that it is good because of the present distress that it is good for a man to remain as he is. Are you bound to a wife? Come on now. Do not seek to be what? So in other words, don't get a divorce. But listen, are you loosed from a wife? Now right there it tells you that there's some people that are loosed from a wife. I've been loosed from a wife. Why? She divorced me. So I was loosed from a wife. So, so, so notice, but he says, notice what he says though. Do not seek a wife. And I didn't. I was seeking the Lord. I didn't go right away and get remarried. I was seeking to do God's will. But look at in the next verse. But even if you do, oh, what a that scripture. Even if you do marry after you've been divorced. Just like my wife divorced me, 
But if you do later marry, after a time, people, not marrying, so get married, divorcing this person, get married. No, after a time. If you do marry, what does it say? Come on, this is good news for those of you who've been divorced and you've been told that you can't marry again. Come on now. But if you do marry what? You have not sinned. <coughs> if you do marry, you have not sinned. And if a virgin or a single person marries, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, here's the issue though. Such will have trouble in the flesh, but I will spare you. So now Paul's start, starting to talk. Listen, we're going through some persecution right now. And guess what? You're going to have some trouble in the flesh. How many know marriage is great, but you can have trouble in the flesh when you get married? Why? Because it's not about you anymore. It's two people trying to become one. Right. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? I don't know. Where do you want to eat? Why? Why? Why do I want? No, I want to eat over here. <laughs> right? You keep, when you're single, you go wherever you want to go. Man. <laughs> so there's some advantages to being single. Now I'm going to talk. To, I'm going to end by talking to you, single people. Man, take advantage of your single life right now. You can seek God with all your heart and not worry about your partner. You know, come on, honey. Leave me alone. You're single. Amen? There's some benefits. That's what I want in today. There's some benefits to being single. But look at verse 12. Notice what he says. Uh, verse 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short that from now on even those who have, should have wives should act as though they don't have any. Verse 30. Those who weep as though they did not weep. Those who rejoice as though they did not rejoice. Those who buy as though they did not possess. And those who use this world as not misusing it. For the form of this world is passing away. What is he saying? Listen, don't get so caught up in this world. Whether you're married, whether you're single, whether you're buying property. Whether you're, don't get so caught up in this world. Because this world is passing away. Right. And Paul said, I'm just trying to get rid of all your distractions. So you can serve God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So if you're married, simplify things in your marriage. If you're single, simplify things in your, in your singleness. Why? So your distractions can be removed. Let's keep reading. Look at this. Look, he says, look, verse 32, but, it, but I want you to be without what? Care. Come on now. He who is unmarried cares for the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he who is married, verse 33, cares about the things of the world, how he may please his wife. There's a difference between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman cares about the things of the Lord, that how she may be holy uh, uh, with, in body and in spirit. But she who is married cares about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I say for your own profit, verse 36. Five. Not that I may put a leash. Paul saying, I'm not trying to put a leash on you, on you, married people. Say you should have stayed single. I'm not putting a leash on you. He says, right? But here's the purpose. Notice the purpose of all that Paul is saying. But for what is proper, and that you may serve the Lord without distraction. But if any man thinks that he is behaving improperly toward his single, you know, person friend. If she is past the flower of youth, and thus it must be, let him do what he wishes. He does not sin. Let them marry. So he's saying if you're single and all of a sudden you meet somebody and you're dating and whatever, and you find out, man, you know what, it, we're for, I think we're for each other, whatever, and you were planning on staying single, but it seems like there's a connection here and whatever. He says, you can go ahead and get married. It's not a sin. Oh, man, I'm sharing some stuff. The Word. The Word of God. But look at verse 37. Nevertheless, he who stands steadfast in his heart, having no necessity, but has power over his own will, and has so determined in his heart that he's going to stay single, in other words, a virgin, does well. So then he who gives her in marriage, or in other words, he who gets married does well, but he who does not get married, you could say, does better. Verse 39. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives, but if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whomever she wishes, only in the Lord. But she is happier if she remains as she is, according to my judgment. And I think that I also have the Spirit of God. So real quick. God's will was for all people to be married. But because of the condition of the world today, some are graced to be single. Especially those in ministry, like missionaries, traveling ministers. There are benefits to the single life. Being, here's some benefits real quick to the single life. Number one, no trouble in the flesh that you would have if you were married. 
Anybody that says that marriage is going to get rid of all your problems has never been married. Woo! <laughs> Another reason. You're free to focus on the things of the Lord. How you may please the Lord. Verse 32. Verse 33, without care for the things of this world, how to please their spouse. You'll be without care. And then verse 33, you're free, you're free to serve the Lord without distractions. See, some people think that marriage will make you happier. Listen to me, people. I'm going to end with this. Marriage will not make you happier. Paul says single life does. What do you mean? If you're not happy as a single in your relationship with Jesus, you will not be happy when you get married. Hallelujah. If you're not happy right now as a single in your without you know in your married life right now, I mean as a single person with Jesus Himself, you'll not be happy when you get married either. Amen. Actually, you're going to add more tr problems because you're going to try to please Him, and now you got to please your spouse. I used to think I could use, I was oh, oh walking in love, 1 Corinthians 13. That's nothing. I can do that. I can walk in love. And then I got married.